morning kiddos. This is our Lewis Dot Structures Worksheet. Um, I'm going to just walk you guys through some of these. The worksheet scales it from easy to super difficult. And there are a couple problems I will do full out with you. I'll walk you through step by step. And there's others that I'm just going to do off screen and put up so you can see the answer and check in if you need to. First things first, based on our last video and Lewis.structure notes, I'm going to just go through and determine how many valence electrons I have for each of these compounds. As you can see, I added in pink all of the different uh, number of valence electrons. Remember that all I do is look at the periodic table and see what column these elements are in to figure out how many valence electrons they have. If there are parentheses next to it, I multiply it just by the number of atoms of that element we've got in this compound. I also did some of the uh, actual Lewis dot structures just kind of to show you what it's like. These are the easier ones. I want to focus more on the ones that involve a little bit more of the lower numbers of rules we have to go through. Uh, so let's look at oxygen then. Oop. Let's try that again. So for oxygen, we've got two oxygen atoms and we've got 12 electrons total. So in this case, there's not going to be a central atom because there's just two oxygens. So I'm just going to put them next to each other and connect them by a line. So that's, that's the basic rules. And now if we had a central atom, our next rule or our next guideline would be to go to the outer elements and give them a full valence. In this case, we've gotten two electrons on the page. And so I'm just going to start putting the rest around. So we've got two, this is four, six, eight, 10, and 12. So I've got all my electrons on the page, but we've got a huge issue here because this, oh, no, that is not the thing I wanted to do. This oxygen has a full valence, but this other side only has six out of its eight valence electrons. So I'm gonna try and use the rule, I think it's number seven, and I'm gonna take these electrons right here and just move them over. So I did that and I did a little bit of rearranging of where the valence electrons were, only because we want this to be as symmetrical as possible. So that's kind of what it looks like there. We take and make, we take non-bonding pairs of electrons and make them bonding pairs. This also satisfies the rule that oxygen wants to have and needs two bonds. So something similar is going to happen with nitrogen, and nitrogen is genuinely a more confusing one. So if I follow the basic rules, I've got my nitrogens bonded to each other. That's two electrons there, four, six, eight, and ten. Now that truly does not work. And at this point, it's actually easier to think of, hey, wait a minute, how many bonds should nitrogen be making? So I'm going to draw a simple Lewis dot diagram of just nitrogen. So it's got one, two, three, four, five valence electrons around it. There are three, I know that looks really weird, but there are three unbonded pairs of electrons there. Nitrogen wants to have three bonds, so I'm going to just kind of automatically do that. I'm going to erase this little guy. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to take these guys in there, and I'm going to take these guys. So what that'll look like so we're going to have a nitrogen triple bonded to nitrogen. Now we've got two, four, six of our electrons on there, and we've got 10 total. So I'm going to do seven and eight there and nine and 10 there. Nitrogen's triple bonded to itself. Now on this next one, I'm going to kind of show you maybe HCl and HBr, hydrogen monochloride, hydrogen monobromide together. Bromine and chlorine come from the exact same column, right? They're bond to the same thing, which is hydrogen. So these are actually gonna look pretty much identical. I don't really have to think about that. I'm gonna put hydrogen, I'm gonna bond it to chlorine. That gives out two of our eight valence electrons we have. And so now I'm just gonna put the rest of the available electrons around chlorine because hydrogen has a full valence. So four, six, and eight. Boom, done. Chlorine's got the right number of bonds. I've used all my available electrons. Everyone's got a full valence. We're super happy here. So now the same kind of thing happens with water and with dihydrogen mon um, monosulfide, excuse me. So 
both oxygen and sulfur in the same column, they're both being bonded to two hydrogens. In this case, we finally do have a central atom again, which is going to be sulfur because sulfur can make two bonds and hydrogen can only make one. So I'm going to put sulfur in that center. I want everything symmetrical, so I'm going to put my hydrogens just to the left and right. I've gotten rid of four of my eight valence electrons. Now hydrogen has a full valence. I don't need to mess with them. I'm going to put my last four valence electrons around sulfur. It's got the two bonds at once, it's got a full valence, and so do all of my hydrogens. Now, we have methane, CH4 is methane, and we've got carbon tetrachloride. Hydrogen and chlorine are definitely not in the same column, but they're gonna have a similar symmetry here because it's a carbon and it's got four of another element. So, very simply, I'm just going to start by putting the carbon in the center. And then I'm going to put a chlorine on each side because that is the most symmetrical we are going to have it. And I'm going to absolutely make this smaller so I can fit all of my valence electrons around that chlorine. So the only thing that's really more difficult about this compound versus methane is that we've got 32 electrons here. I've gotten rid of two, four, six, and eight by bonding the chlorines to the carbons. So now I'm just going to get rid of everything else. So I'm going to do 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So I've gotten rid of all of the valence electrons I have availed to me, available to me. I don't have any extra. My carbon's got a full valence with four bonds around it so that's totally satisfied i've got this chlorine right here it's got a full valence and is totally satisfied and i'm pretty sure if i did it to everything else you would see hey look wait they're all totally satisfied in this so we're good we have it great so now let's look at this little bottom row i'm gonna zoom into carbon disulfide i have 16 valence electrons Every time you see carbon, no matter how many compounds you have, carbon's going to be your central atom. It just has the most bonds. So I'm going to put carbon right there. I've got two sulfurs, so best way to have symmetry is put them left and right. Now, I've gotten rid of four of my electrons. i got to get to 16. I'm just going to start putting them around my outer edge. So I've got four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 14, 16. So if I look at my sulfurs, we're great. We're solid. We're set. They've got a full valence. But if I change focus and look at this carbon, this carbon only has four valence electrons around it. It's got to have eight. So this just doesn't work. And this is kind of the point where you want to stop and think back a little too and make sure, hey, do I know how many bonds my carbon must be making, and do I know how many bonds my sulfur must be making? So if I look at this, the Lewis dot diagrams I just drew, carbon definitely needs four bonds, and sulfur needs two bonds. Right now, we have not satisfied that rule at all. So I'm gonna rearrange some of my electrons here. I'm going to take off, let's see if I can highlight so I can show you guys what's going on. I'm gonna take off my side electrons and move them into the center. So I'm gonna pull those and make it a bond here. I'm gonna pull these guys and make it a bond here. Now I'm gonna erase some things so it's a little bit more clear. Boom. Now, we've gotta check everything. Does my carbon have a full valence? Yes, it does. Does it have four bonds coming off it? Absolutely. Now look at an individual sulfur. Does this sulfur have four bond, or sorry, two bonds coming off it? Yes. Does it have a full valence? Yes. Same thing on that guy. Perfect. Now it's always good to check one last time. Do you have the proper amount of electrons around your compound? So I'm just going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Good. We're done. Okay. Now the next one looks a little bit more difficult because suddenly we have three different elements we're working with in this compound. But we keep calm, we do the same process. We have carbon, 
immediately know it's going to go in the center. Now I'm going to focus on actually the chlorines first because we've got three of them. And again, we always want to try and make this molecule as symmetrical as possible, this compound. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to put my chlorines left to right. I'm going to put one on the bottom. That makes it easy to see that, hey, I only have one more space and that's got to go to hydrogen. So I'm just put hydrogen up here. Now immediately I can tell, hey, my carbon has the right number of valence electrons and it's got the right number of bonds. So do all of my chlorines, because if I do a single Lewis dot structure for chlorine, I can see that it needs to have, hey, just that one bond. And so now we can skip to the step of just placing our extra electrons around our outer, outer elements, our ligands. So I'm gonna start with this chlorine. We've got eight, I'm gonna put 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and 26. And except for this little extra electron I drew down there, we're looking perfect. So now another three molecule or three element compound. Um, we've got cyanide and we've got hydrogen, or we've got hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. Straight up, just put carbon in the center. I'm gonna put hydrogen to one side, I'm gonna put nitrogen to the other side and just connect them. Now, before I even get started here, we've done something with nitrogen. Um, we've done nitrogen bonded to nitrogen. We figured out, hey, nitrogen is really picky. It needs three bonds. We've also worked with carbon a lot, and every single time we work with carbon, we know that it needs four bonds. So it's just kind of a little you know, trick or a shortcut. I'm gonna immediately give more bonds to my nitrogen, which in turn will give more bonds to my carbon. So I'm gonna give that nitrogen the three bonds it needs. And in doing so, I have given my carbon the four bonds it needs. So now I'm just gonna do a quick check through. How many electrons do I have on here? I've got two, four, six, eight. I only need to put out two more. And that's gonna go on nitrogen because it's the only one thus far that doesn't have a full valence. Boom. So now, second page seems way more difficult, way more intimidating. It's pretty much still using the same rules. It's just getting a little bit more, hey, we gotta think through a little bit more logically here. So here we've got hydrogen peroxide. We've got 14 valence electrons, but we have two of each of them. There's probably not gonna be a central atom again here, but we know that hydrogen can only make one bond. We know that oxygen can make two. So I'm gonna put my oxygen in the center. I'm gonna just put both my oxygens here. Now, if I need to make this a totally symmetrical looking thing, then I'm gonna just kinda of keep going in a straight line. Straight lines are pretty symmetrical to me. And I'm just gonna bond everything through. So I'm gonna go bond here, bond here, and bond here. Now, really quickly, since I drew my Lewis dot diagram right up here for oxygen, I can check to make sure, hey, do my oxygens have two bonds? And look at that, they definitely do. Boom, so we're, we're set there. Now it's just a matter of, hey, does everything have a full valence? Do we have all available electrons and no more put onto this compound? So I'm gonna switch this back really quick for later. Now, I've got, my hydrogen's got a full valence, both my hydrogens do, but my oxygens definitely don't. I've got two, four, six electrons already on there. So I'm gonna just keep building on my oxygens. So I'm gonna do eight, 10, 12, and 14. And there we go, we've satisfied all the rules. So definitely about to run out of time on this video. So I'm gonna stop it here and do the final ones with you in another video that's way shorter.